NASA is gearing up for a blast into deep space. Test firing an engine built to handle the most powerful rocket ever. Engineers tested the RS-25 rocket engine for a little over seven minutes at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. The ultimate goal for this rocket is Mars exploration and more missions into deep space. CBS News senior space consultant Bill Harwood is with us now via Skype to explain it all. Bill, what can you tell us about this specific rocket test? Well, the engine test was the latest in a series of test firings. They're trying to make sure these engines are ready for use in what NASA calls the Space Launch System Heavy Lift Booster. Now, the SLS rocket, just to give you a sense of this thing, uh, the, the initial version of this rocket will generate something like 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. That's about 15% more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket, which is the biggest rocket NASA's ever launched. Uh, so it's a big deal indeed. Now, these engines are left over from the Space Shuttle program. They're going to use four of them at the base of these SLS rockets, along with two extended solid fuel boosters on each side. Uh, and that's what's going to generate that more than 8 million pounds of thrust. It's a very big deal. First flight is planned for next year. I'm sorry, make that 2018. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, we're, we're almost there. How, you mentioned that the first it is planned for 2018. How does this change how we're exploring space and where we can go? Right. Well, you know, NASA has been focused on low Earth orbit for the past 30 years. You know, with the space shuttle and building the International Space Station, that's as far as NASA has gone. And they've designed the rockets, the space shuttle in particular, just to go to low Earth orbit. Uh, but to get big payloads out beyond the moon, eventually, as you say, uh, to the red planet, requires a much larger, more powerful rocket that can send much heavier payloads on these very, very difficult trajectories. So not only a capsule to carry the crew, but some kind of habitat module they can live in while they're on the way to Mars. Remember, these are six to seven month long trips one way. And then, of course, they're going to spend time on Mars and have to come back. So it requires a very big, very powerful rocket to make that happen. And that quest to get to Mars at first when launched, when you mentioned that 2018 time, that would be unmanned, right? Uh, yeah, it'd be an unmanned test flight of the SLS and the Orion capsule that NASA eventually launched people in. The first piloted test, a crewed test of this mission, of this rocket, is not planned until the early 2020s. So unmanned first, then piloted. 